Our next look at Path of Exile 2 is imminent. During November 30th's Grinding Gear Games livestream, the developers of the most addicting ARPG currently on the market will not only be revealing their next Path of Exile 1 expansion, but some new content about its concurrently developed sequel, Path of Exile 2. While I'm giddy about receiving more information about the next PoE 1 League, I am extremely curious about what GGG is going to be showing us about PoE 2, especially given the latest teaser trailer with the mercenary and literal guns in PoE. This video will swiftly analyze what exactly Chris Wilson, Jonathan Rogers, and Mark Roberts are going to show us in regards to PoE 2, based on what's already been dropped during the three other huge showcases of this upcoming ARPG. It's time for some sweet, sweet process of elimination. It will overview every single major reveal thus far, spending about 30 seconds on each. Don't worry, each segment won't last too long. I'm quite well practiced in this regard. I feel like there's a joke there somewhere. It will explore a few interesting tidbits we've ascertained from more hidden interviews and hidden pockets of information about PoE2 from GGG themselves. Sometimes you need to dive into the dirtiest minds for the most pristine gold. Finally, it will end with my concrete predictions on what we'll realistically see about PoE2 on November 30th and in the next six months or so, leading to the game's first beta on June 7th, 2024. We're chugging right along toward a heavenly time. My fellow exiles, welcome and well met. I'm Talkative Try. On this channel, we talk about Path of Exile, its development, and all its competitors. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. More on how you can support at the end. Now, let's get to it. When PoE2 was first announced at ExileCon 2019, we learned the following. It would bring on a brand new campaign to address problems people had with the current one. It would completely upgrade all graphics and animations. It would revamp the gem and general skill system. It would bring a host of new ascendancy classes. It would allow us to use all our microtransactions in both PoE 1 and PoE 2's campaigns, as they were the same game at the time. Then, in 2021, GGG revealed PoE 2 would bring two new weapons to the game, the spear and the crossbow. Additionally, it would add boss health bars. Other than a showcase of PoE 2 Act 2's gameplay, there wasn't much new information. All the content was new and beautiful, but no new substantial system announcements were made. Finally, at ExileCon 2023, GGG reconfigured what Path of Exile 2 would mean for Path of Exile 1 and PoE as a whole. It would be a sequel to Path of Exile 1, a standalone game. However, all microtransactions would remain shared between games, like stash tabs and cosmetics. It would be further revamping the gem system beyond the initial scope, adding gem cutting and tons of new ideas and skill types. It would allow for multiple saves of passive skill trees using weapon swaps. The passive skill tree would also undergo a huge rework. It would add six new classes to the game and remove the scion bringing the total number of base classes to 12. It would boast 36 total Ascendancy classes, three for each class. It would keep the same endgame as PoE 1, involving maps. It would contain 700 equipment base types, with each having at least one unique version. On top of this, it would add flails, focuses, traps, and redesigned scepters. Altogether, that is everything that GGG has revealed about PoE 2 at a high level in an official capacity. However, let's dive a little bit deeper and talk about some tidbits of knowledge about PoE2 that you might not be aware of because either it's been quite well hidden or it was just recently announced. GGG stated we would not be getting a look at PoE2's endgame until the new year. That puts a showcase of the new mapping system off the table. This probably means we'll see more of the axe, as we saw in the Mercenary teaser. Regardless, we do know the end game will be full of over 100 riveting bosses and involve historically beloved past League mechanics. The third PoE2 trailer also showed the Atlas passive tree, which likely means that or a version of it will be in PoE2 as well. That's an amazing thing. They already gave us an in-depth and playable version of the Monk, the Druid, the Warrior, the Sorceress, and the Huntress. This likely means our next look will involve the Mercenary, right? The Marauder, the Witch, the Templar, the Ranger, the Shadow, and either the Duelist 
or Gladiator. As noticed by Reddit user GrouchyLoss2732, the Duelist appears to be replaced with the Gladiator in PUE2 in this gem cutting screen that has all the classes laid out. Quite curious, could the Duelist be gone and could the Gladiator be replacing him? They are essentially the same thing. This leaves room for a brand new Ascendancy class for the Gladiator. This prediction about seeing more of the Mercenary on Thursday has almost been 100% proven by the latest teaser released by GGG. Furthermore, this teaser hints at us getting full-on automatic crossbow weaponry and actual guns in PoE as well, in addition to either a new form of movement in the form of WASD or some rad built-in movement for these gun-type skills. After a bit more thought on the topic, I'm unsure if the shotgun we see the mercenary pull out in this clip is going to be a new form of weapon, real guns in PoE, or perhaps a gem a la Energy Blade. If this is a brand new weapon type in PoE, that is a huge leap forward. Can you imagine crafting on a gun base in PoE 2? That's wild. Next, our last look at Ascendancy classes was in 2019 with the Beastmaster, Tactician, and Survivalist of the Ranger with a quick shot of a few other very early ones. I'd posit this update will give us a cursory glance of a few more, please. In the PoE2 press kit released during ExileCon 2023, there were a few pieces of concept art not publicly shown on social media or during the actual presentation. The first reiterates the Tactician, Survivalist, and Beastmaster appear to still be ascendancies for the Ranger specifically, given the art and file name. The second expresses they're still working on some sort of lightning-based or time-based ascendancy for the witch, which is odd since we're getting the sorceress. Perhaps the file is misnamed. In the latest teaser, the mercenary talks about 20 years of being abandoned, not improving the place he's in at all. We know PoE2 takes place 20 years after the fall of Kitava. We've also seen Kitava's skull in the first PoE2 trailer. Could this be Oria or another city? Perhaps Sarn? If so, this could be our look at either the fifth or sixth act of PoE2 for the first time. Additionally, we know the first public beta begins on June 7th, 2024, but we do not know how we'll be getting in. There have been some hints that supporter packs may give access or people who play an absolute ton of PoE1 might be invited. It's incredibly likely this live stream will release more details on how all us exiles will make it to PoE2's first big beta. I know I'm itching to get my hands on PoE2's beta, but I know that I won't be able to drop void born levels of money to access it. Please just let it be a first level supporter pack tier of money. GGG. Finally, let's conclude this video with my big bold prediction about what GGG will and should show in their next teaser for PoE 2. It's quite specific. The most pressing issue PoE 1 players seem to have about PoE 2 is its removal of certain playstyles and how it might be pushing everyone to a much slower pace than we see in PoE 1. This doesn't just mean we won't zoom. It also means we won't battle massive packs and watch them pop. It also means we won't be able to absolutely break the game with snappy builds and amazing items. I think if GGG wants to wash away those fears, they should showcase a well-geared character clearing some dense areas in one of the acts. Show PoE players we won't always need to play a Dark Souls-like game in isometric form. Showcase that ingenuity is still rewarded and not every build will require eight buttons to play optimally. Plus, if they could give a few glimpses of band favorite leagues reaching PoE 2, that would be amazing as well. We know Delirium is in PoE 2. What will it look like? Will Harvest make it there? How about Beyond? Please tell me Sanctum somehow leaps in. But what do you think, exiles of YouTube? Are you cautiously optimistic for this next look at PoE 2? Or are you unfortunately pessimistic and just looking forward to more news about PoE 1? Let me know in the comments below. A massive thanks to each and every one of you who watched this whole video. I deeply appreciate it. We have surged forward so many subscribers in the past few days, and I just cannot believe it. The support is here. And here's an even larger shout out to all those who support me on Patreon and through YouTube. You can find links to support the channel in the description. Please check out these other videos on screen now and share this one with your favorite exile. I have an inkling you and your friend will enjoy them. Anyways, that's all for this video. Alamoana, exile.